turning it to the left, rolls the airplane to the left, turning it to the right, rolls it to the right. If you pull back, the airplane climbs, and if you push forward, the airplane descends. We would generally use the autopilot for most of the flight. However, for takeoff and climb out, we would hand fly the airplane, and also for the approach and landing. So when we're not hand flying the airplane, we use the autopilot. And to control the autopilot, we use these three knobs to control speed, heading, and altitude. The MD-80 had three different fuel tanks depicted here, the left and the right main, which were in the wings, and the center tank in the fuselage. Once the aircraft was fueled, the total fuel is depicted just below that, and the gross weight showed up at the bottom, showing how much the aircraft weighed. On the front side of the throttles are the reverse thrust levers. One unique quirk to the MD-80 was, at the gate, we were allowed to lift those reverse thrust levers, which redirected the air from the engines forward, allowing us to power back from the gate without using a tug. It was a noisy and dusty process that lasted only a few years. While the overhead panel may look a little bit complicated, it's actually divided into separate systems. Starting at the top, we had the electrical system, followed by the fuel system, air conditioning, and pressurization. At the very bottom were enunciator lights. So if any problem happened, these lights would light up indicating what the problem was. Note that each switch was a little bit different from the others. This was to prevent you from selecting the wrong switch. The flap handle allowed us to increase the surface area of the wing by selecting flaps for takeoff and landing. In fact, unique to the MD-80, we could even fine tune this more using a dial just below it, giving us a way to fine tune the flap setting, say to 17, for example. We keep going. We